Hi guys, today I thought I'd talk about fake flash drives, USB flash drives or fake SD cards. If you've recently purchased a USB pen drive or SD card from eBay or some other source or even from a shop, the first thing you should do is test it to see if it's a fake. Fake flash devices have been deliberately modified by the manufacturer to lie about their size. For instance, you might buy a 16 gigabyte USB flash drive, but it may actually only contain two gigabytes of flash memory. If you connect the drive to a USB port, your computer may show that the drive has, has a capacity of say 15.7 gigabytes. But this is because the flash drive has been programmed to report its capacity as 16 gigabytes. It's actually lying. You can see in this diagram, which is in tutorial 7 of my RM Prep USB website, there are two types of, of, way of ways of faking this drive. Type A is one where you've got the memory, the real memory, is at the bottom of the memory map. Any writes you make to up to 2 gigabytes, in this case, will work just fine. But as soon as you start to write files past 2 gigabytes, the writes simply are ignored. And of course, if you read from this, this uh, the same sectors past two gigabytes, you'll probably just get a load of zeros back from the controller. In other words, it'll appear to work when you first try to use it, until you fill it past two gigabytes, and from then on, it will just lose anything you write to it. You'll still have the first two gigabytes worth of files, but nothing more. Type B is a little bit more sinister. The first two gigabytes are your memory, and you can use that as normal. When you fill past the two gigabytes, instead of writing to nothing, it actually overwrites the memory that's already there. So if you, if you write to the three gigabyte point, for instance, it will overwrite anything that it stored previously at the one gigabyte point. And the same with the four gigabytes. If you, if you write at five gigabytes, it will overwrite it at the one gigabyte point. And this means that when you first try to use your memory card, it'll be fine up to the first two gigabytes of memory. As soon as you write past two gigabytes, it'll actually corrupt the memory that's already there. And you'll lose probably everything in that two gigabytes because the file allocation tables are kept at the bottom of memory. So as soon as it goes past two gigabytes, it'll corrupt the tables at the bottom of memory, which is the directory which holds the information about where all your files are in that two gigabytes and all you'll see is that your your memory card is corrupt for some strange reason and you'll just think that you corrupted it yourself and you've actually lost everything on that card. So let's just have a look at this in Explorer and you can see here that drive H is my removable USB flash drive. It says it's 15.9 gigabytes in size and I've just formatted it so it's actually 15.9 of gigabyte space of, is free. But let's see what is actually inside this USB drive. So if we uh, run Chip Genius, which you can download from my website, uh, we'll have a look inside. So when it first runs, it will automatically pick a USB device, uh, mass storage device for you. Um, if you've got more than one USB mass storage device in your system, you'll have to go down this list and highlight the, the, the one that you want to look at. So you can see here it's picked drive H, which is the one we want to look at. It's the only one I've got in my system at the moment. And it gives you various details about the vendor ID and the product ID and the serial number, etc. A lot of fakes actually don't have a serial number, so it's a good clue to look for is if this is all zeros or FFs then um, that's probably a good clue that uh, there's something wrong with this drive. It's identified the, uh, the controller. Uh, it seems to be an Alcor microcontroller, and it's identified the part number. But it's also identified the memory that's, in, that's inside, the memory chips that are inside this um, USB drive. And you can see here it says a single channel, MLC 4K, total capacity, and here's the big giveaway, two gigabytes. But this is a 16 gigabyte drive. How can that be possible?
The next thing we can do is run um, h2testw. Now h2testw is supposed to be the gold standard test for uh, memory, flash memory, and you can change it to English. You can select the target drive, make sure you select uh, your USB drive here, and then you can tell it to write and verify and it will uh, test the memory device. Uh, however, what it does is it, it, it writes files to that device. So if you've already got, um, if the device is already full of, uh, half full say of files, it will only write files, write new files. So it will only test the other half of the flash drive. It won't test all of it. On top of that, it's extremely slow because it tests every single byte of memory that's free on that drive. Uh, if you've got a, a 64 gigabyte drive, this can take hours and hours. In fact, for this drive, I've already done that, and it takes 48 minutes to test the drive. I'll show you the result here, and you can see that it has actually failed the drive, and um, it'll actually tell you the uh, estimated capacity of the drive. The other thing we can do is run fake flash test. This is a program that I wrote specifically to test uh, for this type of problem where you have uh, flash drives which or flash SD cards which uh, don't contain the correct amount of memory in them in the first place. They've been faked by the supplier. So when fake flash test runs you'll get a description here of the two tests that are inside. One is the quick size test, and the other is the test empty space test. The test empty space test is, is virtually the same as the um, H2 test W test, except that it's a bit faster because it doesn't actually read back every single byte. So uh, it, it's a few, quite a few minutes faster than the H2 test W. So if we click through that, you'll see that we've got the two tests here. And to save time, I'll just do the quick size test. Now, this is a destructive test. It'll destroy all the data on your drive, and you'll have to reformat it afterwards. Uh, but it is uh, much quicker than doing H2 test W or the other empty space test. So if you've got a new drive, I'd recommend you always do this test, and then just reformat it afterwards. So let's see what happens when we do that. get a message that's going to destroy the drive so that's okay we don't mind that uh, yep it's okay drive 3 which is drive 3 here drive H is drive 3 and it's going to tell, tell us again just to make sure that you understand so it's written marker blocks to the drive for the first up to sort of 80 percent was very very quick but now it seems to be taking its time, so maybe the first ones it wrote were actually writing to nothing, and the writes were very quick because it wasn't actually writing to memory. And then the last few ones, uh, it works backwards, so it works at the top of memory and goes down. The last few ones uh, actually took a while to run, so maybe that was really writing to memory. So here's the results, and it says that the usable partition size is 2 gigabytes or 2,000 megabytes. and it tells you to unplug and reconnect it and then you'll get a prompt by Windows that it's not formatted and then window, you can use Windows to reformat it or you can use RM Prep USB and there's uh, results here which you can copy to the clipboard and you can uh, send a copy of this uh, information back to the supplier that you bought the USB drive from or the SD card from uh, and complain that it's a fake So now I'll unplug the drive and plug it back in again. And it asks me to format the drive. Uh, so I just say yes. And it comes up with this format dialog. FAT32, 16 gigabytes, volume label. I'll just put this as USB, 16 gigabytes, and quick format.
and there we are it's finished it didn't complain it seems to be have worked fine um, uh, alternatively we can format this with iron prep USB so you could just set it as uh, WIMPU FAT32 and then prepare the drive doesn't matter whether you use Windows to reformat it with or Iron Prep USB, but Iron Prep USB will actually give you a 10% speed improvement um, on FAT32 if you if you format it with Iron Prep USB, uh, due to the way it positions the uh, the partition. It's much better for flash drives. Uh, fact, if if it's NTFS, it makes no difference. Just to demonstrate, uh, I'll I'll try formatting this drive as NTFS. And you can see there it said sector was invalid and it's returned error 9 returned by RM prep USB. The reason for that is uh, that um, NTFS tries to place the uh, $NFT, the master file table, um, at about the 3 gigabyte point on a 16 gigabyte drive. Well, of course, the 3 gigabyte point doesn't exist on this particular drive, and therefore, when it tried to verify it, um, it found that uh, it, it was corrupt and so it reports an error. And the same thing will happen if you try to format that drive as an NTFS drive in Windows with a Windows format. It'll report an error. So I'll just reformat that as FAT32 again. And it's happy. And now we'll see what happens when we test this with the test empty space test. So we've got drive H, make sure it's still drive H, it's still there. So you may get a not responding message, but don't worry, um, it's still doing the test. It's just, um, it, likes, it wants to test the drive as fast as possible. And so uh, it may cause uh, your system to be uh, unresponsive for, for a while because it's trying to test the drive really quickly and you'll see the drive light flashing on the uh, USB flash drive. But uh, don't worry, it'll, it'll come back in a minute and your system will, will be responsive, it's just not, uh, just a bit slow. You can cancel this at any time using the cancel button. So now we need to wait for this test to finish. So I'll just pause the video um, and we'll wait for it to finish. As you can see, it's finished and it says it's probably a fake. So if you just click OK and you've got the results of the, of the test here. Let's finish the test here and it's estimated about 800 megabytes uh, was good. But what we can do is just simply retest this with the quick size uh, destructive test and it'll give us a more accurate size. So uh, lastly, let's, uh, let's we'll just uh, another test you can use is the fake drive tester. This is a rather large application here, so you can select the drive that you want from there. But again, this is very slow. Um, it does test every byte on the drive, and you can select the test type, so you can do read, write, compare, and then you can start the test. I won't start this off because it takes too long. Uh, well, I hope you enjoyed that uh, little video, and um, if you look at tutorial 7 on rmprepusb.com website, you'll see more information about uh, fake flash drives and fake SD cards.